The inspiration for this shader comes from the principal artist of Slime Rancher, Ian McConville. He wrote a great little article about face shaders a couple years ago, and I'll put a link to that below. I'm taking a different approach because I'm not using any textures. The face is created with shader graph shapes. The cool thing about a face shader like this is not only is it super lightweight, you can program things that otherwise would take a long time to animate, like facial expressions or even talking. And maybe I'll do a video on that next. And what's not to love about being able to put a little face on anything you want? Just know that you'll need to have the UV mesh for the face, big and centered. All right, so you can get the shader at the link below. Let's take a look at how to animate blinking by changing the has eyes open material property. On the object, I have a visual script and a C-sharp script. Both are called face controller and they both do the same thing. So I'll show both and you can use the chapter titles to switch to whichever one you'd wanna use. Starting with visual scripting, here, the first thing I do is I get the material from the renderer component, and this way I'm making changes to this object's instance of the material, the clone of the material, not the material globally. After update, I have a sequence node to break up and organize the graphs. The bobbing movement is achieved by time get time, the elapsed time since the start of the game, multiplying that by a bob speed, and then adding in time delta time to smooth it out. Then all that goes into the mathfsine function, which generates a sine wave oscillating between negative one and one. Then we can multiply that by a bob distance. This will adjust the magnitude of the bobbing. And that goes into a new vector three and set position for the ghost. There's a lot of uses for this kind of movement, like for item or health pickups. And actually it's better to set the local position and make this the child of something. And then you can move the parent around wherever you want it to go. The next step is I want to continually set the has eyes open property. You can see in the parameters we need to have an underscore before the name. I want to set this continually so that the blinking will always be applied to the material. This material property is a boolean, but there's not a material set boolean node. We need to use set int instead. And I don't want to use ints in my graph. It'd be better to use a bool and then change it here. So right here, I'm using the select node to change the bool to one and zero. And then I can use the bool and not worry about doing something wrong with the int because it'd be easy to have a value outside of one and zero and that wouldn't happen if I'm working with a bool. Last, I have a cooldown node with a random duration so that we can randomize the blinking or how long the eyes are open before blinking. And finally, the blink a timer that the eyes are shut for 0.15 seconds, which felt about right to me. When the timer is done, the bool is flipped back to true, so the eyes will be open. Here's everything in C-sharp. A difference is that I'm using a variable called tick because we make our own cooldown timer in C-sharp. Rather than use the string for the material property, we can use this property to ID function and save the int ID as a variable which is faster and less prone to error than using the string. In update, I have functions blinking timer and bobbing movement, and then we're changing the has eyes open bool to an int for the material set int. Blinking timer counts down the tick, and when finished, the timer is reset with a random value and the blink is called. Blink sets has eyes open to false, waits for a bit, and then sets it back to true. And here's the bobbing movement using mathfsign and setting the position on the ghost. With all that, let's take a little look at the shader. In this case, I think it's just best to download and take a look at the graph. Shader graph allows you to generate shapes, so the face is created by simply positioning the shapes with tiling and offset nodes. The blinking is done with a mask, and the smile is created through masking out an ellipse shape. I just want to give you something simple. There's plenty of cool things that you could do with this, especially if you do decide to add a texture. You could add a cool scar or a unibrow. It's great to have a quick way to add some life and personality to whatever you're working on. 